everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy. I go by Organized Hobbit here on YouTube as well as Instagram. Today's video is going to be kind of like my watercolor collection part two. Um, there is one more coming. I think it's just going to be focused more or less on other medium besides my palettes and my tubes. Um, but anyway, I just want to start this video with a quick disclaimer. I have a, what I would consider a very big watercolor collection. I know that some people may not consider this a big collection. Some people might consider this an insane amount of watercolor collection. But I am an adult, I have money, and I have people that have gifted these to me or friends that have gifted to these to me and I have either paid for these myself or I've traded for them type of thing. So by no means do you need to have all these things, do you need to have any of these things or less than these things. But I just wanted to kind of do this video just to share that aspect of my collection because I love seeing watercolor collections. I absolutely thrive on watching people's collection videos. So I wanted to kind of throw mine into the racket. Um, you guys already saw my watercolor tubes and stuff inside my tackle box. So the next thing on the list was to show you guys all my palettes. Now, um, some of these aren't in standard palettes. And what that means is I've just kind of made them myself. I've put them together using tins or pencil cases and stuff. And these are things that I use quite frankly and are quite functional for me. Um, there is a video going to be coming up basically DIYing your own watercolor palettes, both from monochrome paintings all the way up to full size palettes. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, let's get into the actual video portion, portion of it. Um, so the first one that I'm going to show you is this Peebo Watercolor Aquarelle Fine. Um, this is, I believe, a student grade. I got it when we were evacuated from my town or city, whatever you want to call it, um, last year. And it worked out fine. Like, it it was nice. Um, it is student grade, so it's not as nice as some of the paints that I have that are artist grade. But it's a nice little travel set. It's not a ton of palette space, just like this one here. Um, this is the Daler and Rowney Aquafine. Um, again, not a ton a, of mixing space. It would have been nice, like with the square one, if this had been white on the inside instead of just having these little pull-out uh, wells, I guess you'd call them. But it's nice. It's got a little brush inside of it. Um, this one did come with a brush as seen on the photo. I just have since taken it out because I broke it, so unfortunately I can't use it anymore. This one has a brush that I cannot get out. It's super stiff. I've never actually used the brush that's inside of it because I don't like tiny little brushes. It kind of weirds me out. I don't know why. I just don't like using them. But yeah, it's a nice little set. Um, very cute. Uh, so next one is this Kirataki travel set. It opens up like so. And it does come with a brush and a pencil that I did take out for a video that I'm doing. So that DIY video. So it does come with it and I have used both of them and they're very nice to use. Um, so you get your mixing space on this side. You have a room for water. There was a sponge in there. It got gross. So I took it out. And then you do have your 12 pans down here. If you lift this little buddy up, you can take the pans out and remove them. And then they just clip back down easy like pie. So this is a really cute little set. Um, I do have this one here, which is the Windsor and Newton variety, and I am looking into getting the Holbein version, just because out of all three, I think that one's my favorite. But this one's a great one for starting out, and it's a, the most affordable one. So even if you don't like the paints that are in it, and you want the travel size capacity, because I mean, this is no bigger than a juice box. So I mean, easy, easy care, and it comes with its own water bottle. So it's a very affordable option comparatively to the Holbein and the Winsor & Newton one. That being said, the Winsor & Newton does offer two versions, which is the Cotman one and then their professional grade watercolors. I opted to do the Cotman one just because it seems to be the same actual case, just different paints. But this one's quite nice as well. I think it's one of the best travel palettes that they have out there. I want to look at the portable painter that everybody's raving about right now. Um, but they're doing Kickstarter campaigns. I gotta kind of wait to get onto one. But yeah, this so this came with common paints. I took them out and put in my Dan Smith paints that I wanted to use specifically for this palette. Um, and it's got three mixing wells, a huge water bottle. This holds quite a bit of water. Has their kind of standard small brush. So this is a 12, or sorry, a two size round. 
and just like the other one this one slides up you can pop your paints out or pop them back in and you have your little well of water quite nice so the next one here is my sakura koi i bought this i think this was like my first watercolor set that i bought it's been a very long time since i've used it but i really like these paints i think they're fine i know a lot of people weren't a big fan of it because of the plastic lining that comes with it but i thought these were fine like i these got a ton of use when i was first starting to paint and i mean, I mean granted i was painting differently back then but it seems to be that they have a ton of paint in these little plastic wells and this thing has been dropped it's been you know kicked by accident and it is none the worse for wear i think sakura koi is an excellent start to a lot of watercolorists if you're looking for more affordable options a lot of the big box stores sell them so that is that option um the last one i guess of travel palettes i'll throw in next i think a couple of my more custom ones um but this is the peerless set i know you can buy them like as they come which is in the strips but I got this one special ordered from Happy Scrappy, I think was the one that did it for me. This is, was a couple years ago, mind you. So, But it has all the colors. It's got a little bit of plastic here for if you want to mix. Um, it was really great when I was carrying it in with my traveler's notebook. I do have the actual notebook sizes, so this one hasn't gotten a lot of love recently. But I'm going to use the colors, and then once they're done, because this is like a very nice fabric container, I can then just use it for something different. So that is that. Um, so next I think I'm going to show you this one here. Um, just so I can get it off my desk because it's rather large. This is the Gonzai Tombi 36 watercolor set. This one's actually kind of interesting because it's kind of like a in-between watercolor and wash. Because it some of the colors are very translucent. But if you don't water them down like as much as like fairy water they actually become semi or fairly opaque um i loved using these i bought these for i think it was 30 dollars on amazon thought they were the best thing since sliced bread one of them out here which was a silver or a sparkly white or something i took out for a project um and it's still sitting with the rest of the stuff so it's not in here but this is how it looks when you get it um the one thing I will say is in drier or more humid, not drier, more humid climates, just be careful because you do get a lot of cracking on some of the colors as you use them as they get wet and stuff. But I mean, it didn't affect the paint quality or anything. Um, I really like this set. I actually should really use it more often. My biggest thing with it is it doesn't actually have a mixing space. And I can't bring myself to buy a good mixing space. I keep using ones from other sets, so I'm lazy. The next one I'm going to show you is this one here. So this is my what, bleh, bleh, bleh. can't speak today, guys. Sorry. Um, this is my White Knights Yarka Saint Petersburg paints. They are Russian. They are great. I love these paints. Um, they're super cheap in comparison to other. Um, water-based or water-based professional based paints you get full pans and whatnot and you pay roughly about $70 depending on where you buy it which that's Canadian prices too so you can get it a lot cheaper if you're betting in the states and as you can see like I've completely loved using this palette I used it recently on one of my um travel painting or not travel paintings my plain air paintings um with outside and whatnot so that was exciting i really like it i love all the mixing space that it has um just put that back and whatnot um when i grabbed this one i also wanted to kind of do a comparison based off of this one and the student grade version which is the sonnet paint which i have put into an empty one of the cases that the st petersburg white knights come in so Lindsay from the frugal crafter has a great video comparing these two so i won't even bother going into it but yeah so she's got a video comparing these two um they originally come in a like a cardboard box type thing with them in individual it looks like almost like um treat containers like their little pop-in 
plastic, I guess, very similar to the Koi. Um, but I just took them out and put them in here because there is no mixing space in the actual box. So I just put them in here and it just worked fine. I'm loving the full pans and I can't wait till I use up the paints and I can use the full pans and other palettes. Okay. Um, so I think I'm going to use this one now. This one I don't know if it's going to fully fit on my desk so bear with me on that. Um, this is the Magello Studio Palette for watercolors. This thing is freaking huge. Um, I'll just do a comparative for you guys. This is the size of my, the standard 48 watercolor tins. This is how big this thing is. And this carries 52 or 58, I can't remember offhand, colors. And I bought this when I purchased for my birthday for myself, because it was a little present for me to me, the complete collection of Holbein watercolors. Um, so it opens up like so. You guys can see how it mixes on here. It's very similar here. And then this thing goes around the whole way and you have a ton of mixing space over here, as well as little divots here to clean your brush on the side here, which is quite nice. These wells are very large. So this is a really great set for people with the space and the ability to have lots of room and whatnot. What I typically do is whatever side of the palette that I'm working on, I just kind of set my water tub on here just because this takes up like literally like half my desk so with other things being on my desk there's not a ton of room left um but yeah this is by Magello and this is what houses half of that tube collection the rest of them are actually living in one of the 48 tins that I purchased and they are in here I chose to use whatever colors were colors that I wanted to use in terms of portraiture and my main landscape paintings in here the remainder went in here for other types of painting and whatnot so I really like these paints um I think they're fine I know a lot of people they're not they behave a little bit differently than other paints I find and I don't know if that's just because there's a lot of colors that are mixed with white or what it is but I really like them I've enjoyed using them so far Next one's going to be this one here. And I, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I was in the midst of cleaning all this up so I could put stuff on my desk. And now it almost seems like it looks worse. I mean, I know you guys can only see this one square, but if you could see around my space right now, you'd be like, Organized Hobbit, you are not so organized right now. And I'd be like, I know. Um, this is the Windsor and Newton palette. Um, this is the common one. And it opens up very similar to the Yarka St. Peterburg ones, or not Yarka, the, yeah, St. Peterburg White Knight ones. Um, got your mixing spaces, your little bigger wells. This has 45 half pans, but 40 colors. So five of the colors are replicated. Um, ones are crimson, yellow ochre, ultramarine, ivory black, and Chinese white are replicated. Um, really nice set, really good set. Definitely something that you want to, especially with Windsor and Newton look around for the best price because you definitely don't have to play, pay like Michael's prices or I wherever else you guys in the states can pick up Art or DeSera's prices if you're in Canada um, because you can definitely find these a lot cheaper. I bought mine from Jackson's Art Supplies I believe it was and I paid maybe like 70 Canadian? 80 Canadian if I remember correctly but let's move on um actually i'm gonna show you guys this one next because then i can get into my metal palettes and my custom palettes um this was actually the first set of magello mission gold watercolors that i purchased this one is a 36 set it came with tubes and this set and you can just fill them up and utilize them i really really like this set when i first got it my biggest issue with it is it stains like nobody's business so I think that once I use up the paint that's in here, I'm going to either try to deep clean it or I might just scrap this palette because I find the other one hasn't stained quite as bad. So I don't know what's up with this one. I know a lot of people say that the pan ones and their pans are not half pans, but the pan version of them doesn't stain quite as badly as this does. So we will see. I haven't really found much material on cleaning these. So once the paints are used, that's my intention. Um, so we're going to move now into my full-size palettes. 
first one here is the Munjo Mungo. I don't know if you guys can see that pull up to the camera. And as you can see, and I'm sure you've noticed by this point, my palettes get used like nobody's business. I am definitely not one of those people that babies their palettes and cleans it after every use because I feel like that's a waste of paint. I tend to like use my palettes for a little while and then I do a little sketchbook painting using just the colors that are remaining in my palette. So maybe I'll do a little video on that if anybody's interested. But yeah, these are really nice. I really like these paints. They're meant to be, I believe, artist grade paints. Um, I really like how they behave. They're really pretty. They're really colorful. And it's in rainbow order, which always makes me happy. So that is these ones. Um, the next ones that are, is these are the Prima ones. I bought these in the actual physical little tins that they came in. But I just took the colors that I mainly use. With the exception, I think, of what? Five colors? Six colors? In here. So everything else is in here. I used this actually this morning. So definitely still a lot of paint in here for work. But I just moved them all in here. I find... These aren't as uh, pigmented as the Mungo Munjo. However, the pans themselves are very similar. And I don't know if you're going to be able to pick that up on camera. But they all have a very rough texture until you get to paint with them for a while. So I'm not sure what kind of creates that texture. But it hasn't really harmed anything. It was just something that I picked up on and a lot of other people picked up on. When the Primas first came out and then when I got my Mundos in the mail, I happened to notice that it was a very similar type of thing. So, next one is my custom Daniel Smith paint. I actually, when I was on eBay, this was probably close to a year ago now, um, one of the people that I normally buy from was doing an auction. And she had 42 or something, no, 65 watercolor tubes of Daniel Smith paint. Quite a few of them were duplicates. Um, however, nobody seemed to be, well, oh, I shouldn't say that. There was quite a few bidders, but it was getting to be at the end of it and nobody seemed to be jacking it up really quick. So last minute I was able to snag these and when I got them in, I verified them and everything. So I was really excited. So I put them all in here. Um, I definitely need to expand on the collection. There's a ton of really nice reds and blues and whatnot but not a whole lot of greens but the nice thing is I can mix and make my own greens so that's not an issue um there was a ton of like these iridescent duochrome and all that and I don't really use them so I might just give those paints away or sell them or something because this will last me forever I will never go through all of these um paints and that's 100% true um this is my custom Magello palette and I need to order a new one because this is cracked. I sadly dropped this not too long ago and I don't know if the camera will pick it up but it is all cracked in there so I do need to order in a new one and I think that when I do I'm going to order the one from Jackson's Art Supplies which is a little bit of a nicer version of these ones. These ones I bought for I think it was like six bucks a palette off eBay and it took a month to get here and whatnot which I mean it wasn't a big deal I wasn't in a rush to get them but yeah sadly this palette has to has to go but the nice thing about this one compared to a lot of other ones is it's kind of it's these edges aren't sharp which is nice but anyway so these are the paints that are in here again very well used so you can see it is not I think it's pretty to look at but a lot of people don't because they're not super nice and whatnot anymore but that is okay so the next ones here are kind of like my do or die paints I wanted these so bad and the paints are so pretty but I have such a beef with something that I'll show you in a second these are my Toscana Zeki friends paints and I ordered these from the website themselves I paid enormous amount of exchange rate but I was saving up for a very long time so I could purchase these and I am saving up now for the set of gold Kolinsky Sable I think they are brushes um the travel brushes so I'm very excited about that these ones I was very happy to get the palette and stuff are beautiful my biggest thing with these paints is that the pans aren't even full it drives me nuts um so some of these, I don't know if the camera will pick them up that well. Let's see if I can bring a little closer to them to see. But yeah, some of these are like, this one here is like half full. I don't know if you guys can see, like half full. 
and apparently that's just the way they come they fill them they shrink them and then they get sent um which is a little bit annoying considering what you were paying for these paints however i must say that they are beautiful um i will probably when i need quite a few order again just because the shipping and duties and stuff on them was fairly expensive so didn't really want to invest in a whole bunch of refills and stuff like I don't want to buy these single refills at a time but with the I find using them they haven't really dipped below much so I'm gonna show you um, now moving on beyond my little rant um, my two custom palettes I do have uh, in what I mean by custom is that obviously in the case of this one I used an empty case and this one is a full case but what I mean by custom is that I took paints from different brands and put them into one case. My other ones here were all one standard brand. Um, so this is a whole buying case and I bought this empty because I thought the case itself was super, you know, super nice and it's a lot more uh, portable than the 48. So I can get 48 colors in here and I mean, so it's a lot shorter. It's not really any thicker. And it's got a really nice space here. And the nice thing is, is you can tr take out these and put in travel brushes. I opt not to. And I love the fact that this pops out. So you can put your little, because it's very fairly stiff. You can put your little paint in here, hold it, have your this on the side. Or you can have it just in here where it belongs. Because I like to take this out and wash it so I can get it nice and clean. Um, but this is a mix of Daniel Smith Holbein. Magello and a one winter newton color which i do believe is this one i may be wrong no it's the white it's the white i remember now um <laughs> so but yeah so that was my whole mine custom and it's really cool because you can get these off ebay super cheap so i would recommend this if you're looking to have something i may even purchase a few more of these and transfer them all into here because I like the amount of space that you get in this and this is a lot easier to store and I can just put a little nice pretty little label move that to the side and my last custom one and this one's in a need of being reorganized because I took pretty much everything out because I'm in the process like I said to doing another video but yeah so I have this triple decker pencil case so this part comes out down below I have a little pen and a tissue I do keep usually my water brushes in here and then I have a circle or oval kind of white plastic thing it's um, came from a container of some sort when I op when I ordered something I can't remember but it actually like a nice thick enough plastic that it worked very well as a palette with this so I have that and it has a nice little lip if I can find it I will share it at some point um, but yeah, so that is in here. My little watercolor swatch of the colors. Again, this is a mix, I believe, of just Holbein and Windsor and Newton. Or Holbein and Magello. And then it does have space down below for pencils and stuff that were carried in here. Um, but again, I took this apart, but I just wanted to show you guys this. So the next three things that I show you are the last three things. But these are my actual handmade watercolors. I've been kind of scouring looking at different companies that offer them and wanting to find different companies that are more I guess accessible um like Greenleaf Blueberry and whatnot they have a ton of beautiful paints and Redwood Willow same thing they have a ton of beautiful paints but updates and stuff there it's hard for a lot of people to get them you know easy enough to purchase so I purchased from three different companies that and a fourth one is coming that I think would have been nice additions to show you guys and to try out for myself. So this is the first one. This is the Jasper Stardust paints. And if anybody wants to know where to buy any of this stuff, again, please leave a question down below. Um, or, or a comment, I should say. But I decided to buy from him the 48 half pan set. Just because when I was watching him for a while, I saw that they did come up. Um, I do have a review on these already up on my channel if you're interested. I really like these paints. I think they're really nice to play with. They're very different than anything I have ever seen. So if you want to know more about these, please go check it out because, like I said, I have a, a review on how I use these ones and how I enjoy these ones. 
and whatnot. The next two I ordered custom orders so they didn't come like how they came in these sets. So they came, the one came individual, the other one came in little tins based on how they set them up. But I decided to move them into these chocolate tins because I love these tins and I really had nothing else to use them for. I was using one for a pencil case at one point but this actually worked out perfectly and I will show you why. And it's this one here I want to show you first. Because I have this old Windsor and Newton palette and I was able just to take it out, put some magnet on the back and I have a full palette. Very exciting for me. Maybe less exciting for you guys, but very exciting for me. So basically I just decided to upscale some of the palettes and stuff that I was using. It's actually this one right here because I didn't have the fortitude to have it taken out to show you guys. Um, so it came with pans and stuff in here. Actually, I think this one came with the tubes and then there was this stuck in here and I just popped it out. I think at one point I'm going to try just to take this entire thing out and reuse this thing, but we will see. For right now, this is working great. This is my Ruby Mountain Co. paints. Again, handmade. Again, beautiful. I am loving these ones. Um, this one here I was super duper excited about and the reason being is that you can buy these in Canada. I love Canadian um, companies and not to say that there's anything wrong with states companies but it's always nice to buy something that's in your country. So I was really excited when I found these. I talked to them. I talked to Jennifer who was complete and total sweetheart and we worked out that I was just going to buy the whole collection because I wanted the whole collection. Um, and this, so they are absolutely beautiful. These will be being rehomed um, because they are a tad bit taller than these ones, the other ones. So I will be rehoming these ones. Uh, but I do have a, if I can grab it, another magnetized version that does sit on here. But it doesn't close quite as nice just because the embossing isn't as deep as it is on this one. So there's not as much room. But it sits in here fine and I've just set this on top and it's been great. I can't even explain to you how happy I was to find this company. But anyway, that is basically it. Um, I'm hoping that I will have my other videos and stuff filmed. I'm filming this now in, where are we, August, but I don't think it's actually going to be uploaded until sometime in September just because the internet here is a little bit spotty and I know this is a longer video, so... You guys won't be waiting to see it, but I'm waiting to upload it and it's going to be so awesome to finally get this uploaded. So, but anyway, thank you very much for watching guys. Thank you. Please subscribe. Please like this video. It does help my channel and whatnot. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And have a great day guys. Bye.